Hello, it's Danielle with Danielle's Critters, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a baby bin for a corn snake. This corn snake is actually too big for a baby bin at this point in time. Um, this this little one, she hatched out in November of last year and is uh, too big for the baby bin, but she's going to help us show it off today because all of my brand new babies ate today and we can't get them out to show us. Um, but we're going to walk step by step on how to set up the baby bin. I use baby bins for a number of animals because it is an inexpensive way to house them. And for brand new baby animals, it works really well size-wise. So this is actually a six quart Sterilite bin. And this is what I often house brand new baby geckos in. Um, it gives them uh, enough space that they're able to move around and enjoy it, but also uh, not so much space that it's difficult for them to find their food. Um, by putting this front vent in, it's really easy for me to make sure that the humidity is, is good in here and that there's plenty of misting going on to make sure that the baby gecko gets plenty of water and it is convenient and easy for me. So there is an element that is strictly that. With the snakes, I don't like to use this, the inexpensive Sterilite bin because when the snake gets big enough, it can actually pop this lid and... If you don't make sure it's really secure, it would be really easy for uh, a lightly put down lid to be pushed up by a baby snake, and then you've lost your baby snake. So what I do for them is I make sure that I purchase a bin that has latches that go over the top of the bin, and that makes sure that it's nice and secure, and it's not like you can't accidentally leave it open if you've snapped it closed. So um, this is my go-to for brand new baby snakes. Now this works really good when they're hatchlings. Um, the, the one that I showed off at the beginning of the video is going to be a little too big for this bin. Um, so you do want to move them out of this. This is not definitely not a permanent solution. Um, we do sell this as a kit and that is what we're going to walk through today is setting up all of the elements that I sell, sell as a kit. Um, it's really important that you get, it's, it's really easy to do, but it's also important that you get it all set up right. If you've purchased a baby bin from us, then you will get the, or you can have the option to buy this heat mat with thermostat. This is uh, something I actually purchased on Amazon and then I resell it at cost. And it's really just set up for your convenience. This is the best inexpensive heat mat and thermostat that I've found. It's very, very important when using heating elements that you're using a thermostat to make sure that nothing gets too hot. And if something should go wrong, the thermostat will actually turn off the heating device so that you don't have a fire. And it will help protect your animal and your home. And that's really important. So um, I am going to leave a link for you in the description below so that if you want to pick this up on Amazon, you can definitely do that. These guys are fantastic and I do use them for quarantine situations and for baby bins around our house. Um, I tend to use a lot of overhead heating and we do use uh, rack systems for our snakes. So these are often used as part of quarantine, but not a long-term solution for us. That being said, um, we have had problems with other inexpensive thermostats where they just stop working and then your heat mat doesn't work at all and you've got a cold animal. So I do highly recommend this one. And today we're gonna go over how to set this up. So the first thing to note is that this is the probe for the thermostat and it is actually going to uh, be placed where you want your heat to be. So um, I recommend picking a side to be your hot side and actually sticking the suction cup to the bottom of the floor before you've put anything in the bin. And then you're gonna slide your wire up so that, this is easier to do with two hands. It runs along the side and then actually comes out the top here. And then you're gonna set your heat so if you turn your thermostat on and it is in, hold on, come on, come on, come on. It's not gonna do it for me. So if you turn it on and it is in Celsius, maybe I gotta do the other direction. To turn. Ah, so if it is in Celsius, when you first turn it on, then you're gonna hold the up button down until it switches over to Fahrenheit assuming you need Fahrenheit versus Celsius. 
And then to set it, you're gonna actually hold the set button down until it starts blinking. So we want this hot side for the corn snake to be 85 degrees. And then we push the set button and it will heat up until the heat mat, it, or until this spot here is at um, 85 degrees. Now, because the heat mat isn't plugged into the thermostat, this is where you would plug in your heat mat. Um, this will just keep powering the outlet forever because it's never gonna get all the way up to 85 degrees even here in the reptile room. So then what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna slide your heat mat under just the warm side. So only one half of the enclosure is covered by that heat mat. And then it will keep it warm for you. Then you're gonna actually cover your probe with a piece of paper towel as the substrate for your um, baby snake. And then I use these mushroom hides, um, as in these were mushroom containers, and I've carefully cut little holes in them. And then the baby snakes use them as hides. They also use them as ledges. They'll curl up here and hang out. Finally, if you've, print, if you've bought a kit from us, then I include, and this one's dirty. I will wash it before putting a baby snake in here but I include a 3D printed water bowl that fits perfectly in between the two mushroom hides. And my son actually designed and printed these for us specifically because we had baby snakes tipping over water bowls left and right. And um, these work a lot better that way. And then um, you will also get a cute little vine. Um, and of course the one that I have is also you know, from the dirty, dirty uh, pile to be cleaned, but, um, this uh, vine is gonna help give your baby snake some cover and just make it feel a little more secure. And it, it doesn't have to be arranged any specific fancy way. So I just tend to, to tuck it in there um, just to give them cover and they like to hide in it. And then um, when I feed them, I feed them down here on the floor and I, a, a brand new baby snakes, I just drop feed. So I leave the mouse there for them and I walk away. And you can actually leave a baby mouse overnight or even up to 24 hours waiting for a brand new baby snake to eat. Um, and sometimes that makes them feel more comfortable. So if you are going to make your own, you want to make sure that you are providing ventilation and that your hole is not too big for whatever snake that you have in here. Um, these holes were done actually for my brewmating snakes because I brewmating snakes in these containers this year and um, I refuse to put brand new baby garter snakes in here because they're just too small and I do think there is a chance that they could get out of this size hole so you do want to make sure you're paying attention to that and you definitely there is a lot of security to the over the the latch style bin it really makes a huge difference as I said earlier Amber here is way too big for the baby bin um, but she was housed in a baby bin for uh, a few months and um, she did just go straight in there to the hide. Um, Peekaboo. Uh, she is also feeling a little cheated today that she did not get fed. Um, she acted like she wanted me to feed her. So this makes a great home for a nice little snake and um, it is a great way to take home a baby. Uh, in my opinion, the number one thing for a hatchling is really that the bin is something it's not going to escape from and that makes this a great option. And then moving it into a larger enclosure as it gets older is also uh, a great option and you just have to make sure that it's secure. Your heat mat is good for up to a 20 gallon, so you can always take that along into the next size enclosure. And there you have it. I would love it if you subscribed and left a comment and liked this video if it was helpful. It would also be great if you watch some more amazing critter content that's coming up next. And our exciting egg and baby counter is also available for you to check out. Um, the links to both the containers that I use and that, um, heat mat and thermostat are included in the description. If you wanted to purchase them, I will get a small kickback, which will help the channel grow. And uh, Amber and I are headed off. Talk to you later.